How does moving to a new or existing home affect a person? If I sell my house, how will that place affect me after I move and the new owners who will live there? That's a good question. We live in places, and these places are not always our own, built especially for us. Most of the time we move into houses that have had previous owners, and nowadays we have to rent some places to live, and of course someone else has lived there before us. Of course, it's best to live in a place that's been built for you, taking into account your energy and that of your family. Unfortunately, very few people can afford this, or claim that their homes meet this requirement. And of course, if you move into a place after the previous owners, it can have an effect. But what kind of effect? Let us try to consider this question and understand whether it is worth worrying about and what we can do in general to avoid negative consequences and negative effects on ourselves and others. The etheric realm, which is the energy of the house, is short-lived in nature. Those who are familiar with the formation of the etheric realm know that it cannot exist for long. Energy has a tendency to dissipate, it tends to spread evenly. And the informational component, if it is not nourished, disappears very quickly. So if the people who lived in the house before you regularly maintained a negative emotional background, For example by constantly fighting or experiencing conflict, and you move in after them, you may feel the negative energy of the house. And how can you feel it? People with a subtle organization of consciousness will feel it immediately, they will find their mood quickly ruined in this place. And people who are considered thick-skinned won't feel anything, and even if they do, they will assume that simply airing out the room will be enough to make it all go away. And indeed such energy dissipates quickly enough, and people who move into a house replace the old energy with their own, and after a while the house becomes like their second skin, we fill our homes with our own emotions, they become dominant and we practically create our own environment. It's much worse if there is something in the house that nourishes this negative energy. And what could that be? It could be a certain material object that contains an informational component, perhaps an enchanted object or something that has retained a certain memory, a certain informational imprint. Because I repeat, energy dissipates quite quickly, but information doesn't. So if there is an object in your new home that has a negative informational imprint on it, or has been made specifically to leave such an imprint. Then of course that house won't be able to attune to your energies very quickly. These are usually enchanted items, or items with a negative history. For example, a bed where someone has been ill for a long time or has died. Such memories remain and can be held in the energy of the house for a long time. And you might think, what's wrong with this place? You're always in a bad mood, you don't feel well, your children don't listen to you. And it's all because you have an enchanted object in your house. And everyone who lives there is constantly interacting with that object. 
This usually applies to items that have absorbed the negative impact. And items that have come into contact with a sick or deceased person are likely to have the most negative impact. So, even if you live in a rented house, it's worth remembering that there are certain items that you need to pay special attention to and certainly shouldn't use after someone else. First of all, you should always buy your own bed, including the mattress, and it is not advisable to save money on it. Dishes that have been used by strangers can also hold the negative imprint for a very long time, especially if they are old, chipped or cracked. The same applies to a rented house with all the furniture and household goods. Of course, it's very convenient and comfortable and you don't have to spend money and buy new things. But there are two sides to every coin and we know that any convenience and comfort can have the opposite effect. Sometimes you have to pay for comfort with more than just money. So remember the following. If the dishes are not new, it is better not to use them. Just put them somewhere in the far box or give them back to the owner. It is always better if the items you come into close contact with are your own personal items. The same applies to daily use items such as a towel or anything else that comes into contact with your physical body. Usually sensitive people are able to sense such objects immediately, and when they enter a house they sense which objects it's better to get rid of. Give to the owners, or put away so they don't come into contact with them. If you're buying an existing home, it's understandable that most of the everyday items won't be there. However, there may be some old items. But you know, if we move into an existing house and don't plan to renovate it immediately, we're unlikely to look under the skirting board and under the threshold. In fact, very few people study the history of the house. It used to be common, but people studied the history of the house mainly from the point of view of possible legal complications that could make life difficult in the future. For example, you might have bought a house where someone who had been in prison was registered as a resident. There used to be a lot of problems when such a person came back and claimed his rights to the house. Even though the new owner was a so-called bona fide purchaser. But apart from these legal details, there are details that no legal document can reveal, such as who lived in the house, what their fate was, whether there were accidental deaths or childhood illnesses. All these details can play a role, especially when it comes to old houses with a long history and a lot of memories attached to them. After all, the older a house is, the more memories it holds. And, of course, you can talk to these walls in many different ways. You can get the information you need from your neighbors. Or you can use your diagnostic and magical tools. If you're buying an existing house, it can be useful to do some unofficial research into the history of the place. And in general, my advice to you is that if you buy an existing house, try to do some repairs there, at least those that allow you to check and clean all the hidden places. It always helps. Now about a house you're moving out of. Try to never leave your personal items there. Remember, there is sympathetic magic. And even if no one is enchanting items that have been in contact with your energy, 
The principle of sympathetic magic can be applied. And if the new owners are ill, or have bad energy or consciousness, you may feel it for a while. Such a bond is not useful, but of course you can protect yourself from it. You can use Hell's Seal, for example, or any other protection that works for you. But of course it is better just to be careful and not to leave your personal things. It is better to destroy them, as if to isolate, to eliminate the energy together with the material carriers. In this way you are simply maintaining hygiene, hygiene of your own space and hygiene of your own consciousness. If you are moving out and you have good contact with the brownie, you should take him with you and ask him to clean your house of any traces of your presence. Leave gifts and presents for brownie, that will usually be enough. And say goodbye to your old home. Just say goodbye. Thank it for all it has done for you. And ask it to protect you from unwanted contact. For example, by saying, what I have left here doesn't belong to me. It belongs to you. In this way you ritually sever your connection with any personal item you may have inadvertently forgotten. Of course, all of this is difficult to do if you are staying in a rented apartment or hotel room for a few days, for example on a business trip. But in such circumstances you can light a candle with some runic formula. For example, you can put on the candle the standard cleansing formula that we use, Nathis, Soilo, Nathis, burn that candle and it will cleanse that space for you so that you will have enough of that cleansed energy, at least for a couple of days. This way you won't be affected by the negative energy of people who have been there before. You will cleanse the space of the energy of disease if there was any, and the space will generally become cleaner and lighter. The cleansed energy of that space will more naturally accept and be filled with your energy. And you will simply feel much more comfortable in these few days living in a space that now recognizes you as its own, because you have filled it with your own energy. These are the recommendations I can make to you, Dear Maria, and to you, colleagues, in this matter.